Welcome to Tor 101, a series explaining how censorship and surveillance work and how to defend yourself. We'll begin with the example of Alice sending an email to Bob. On its way to Bob, this email will travel through several companies. Alice and Bob both have Internet Service Providers, or ISPs. Ideally, your ISP provides unrestricted access to the Internet. But at each stage of your connection, censorship and surveillance can occur. Alice and Bob can be spied on with software placed on their computers. Their ISPs can cut off all access to the Internet or certain parts of the Internet. For example, some governments restrict access to foreign websites. It's easy to impersonate people online. Someone could pose as Alice or Bob and intercept their messages. Here's one way this can happen. In order to connect to a site, like your email provider, you need its address. This address is a string of numbers. Remembering the numbers for all of the sites that you visit isn't user-friendly. This is what the domain name system, or DNS, is for. When you type in a web address or click on a link, you are asking for the location of the computers that store the information you want. Usually, you get the address for the site you want. In some places, Sensors control this system and will tell you that the site you want doesn't exist or is forbidden. In a worse case, criminals or other groups doing surveillance redirect you to a fake site. If you give this imposter site your password, it ends up in the hands of your adversaries, who take it to the site you are trying to reach, enter your password, and get access to your accounts. They can now read your messages and even see who your friends are on social networks. Many approaches to surveillance and censorship have one thing in common. They replace your local, surveilled connection to the internet with one elsewhere. One-hop proxies and virtual private networks can be useful, but they still have a record of your activity. They can be hacked, bribed, or coerced to give up information on their users. They know where you're coming from and where you're going to on the internet. Tor bounces your traffic through three out of thousands of volunteer relays in over 80 countries, separating the origin and destination of your communications. No one relay gets the whole picture of your path through the network, so Tor doesn't collect user information. At most, your ISP sees a connection to the first relay, but doesn't know where you're going from there. The website you visit sees that there is a connection coming from the last relay, but doesn't know who you are. Your path through the Tor network also changes every so often to make it harder to track you. Next time, we'll cover more information that you need to stay safe online. In the meantime, you can learn more and download software for Mac, Windows, and Linux at torproject.org.